Have you ever looked in the mirror and wondered if you're fat without actually looking fat? I mean, literally, like sometimes you can have a pot belly. Sometimes you can just be distended where you're somewhat lean, but you're confused whether you're fat or whether you're just bloated or what. Well, the fact is it could be visceral fat. There can be people that are seemingly lean that have big bellies because they have a lot of visceral fat. And a lot of times we hear that visceral fat is the worst kind of fat. And the truth is it's not good at all, but there actually is a function to it. But I'm gonna tell you in this video how you can reduce your visceral fat, but I'm also gonna give you a good physiological understanding of what it's all about and the difference between sub-Q and visceral at a real detailed level so you can get rid of what you need to get rid of. You're tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos on Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. I wanna make sure you hit that subscribe button and also turn on that little bell button so you can get notifications whenever I go live or post a new video. Let's go ahead and let's get right into the science. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about before I get into the whole visceral fat thing is sub-Q fat. Okay, sub-Q fat is the fat that is underneath your skin on top of your muscle. It's the fat that we most think of when we think of fat. It's there for cushion, it's there for insulation, and it's there for energy. And all it is is a group of what are called adipocytes. Okay, so it's basically our storage form of triglycerides that ultimately get acted upon whenever we need energy. So when our body says, hey, we're deficient in food and we need energy, it's gonna act upon this fat, right? But it's also there for insulation. It keeps us warm, okay? It keeps us warm whenever it's cold out and things like that. But there's two different kinds of fat that we will have in our body. We have brown adipose tissue and white adipose tissue. White adipose is the main fat that we think of, okay? It's the cushion, it's not very metabolically active. Then we have brown adipose tissue. Brown fat is actually okay. This is hard ways for us to determine if we have white or brown fat without doing a lot of studies, right? Brown fat actually generates heat without ATP. It has what's called uncoupling protein, which basically allows, I'm gonna go complex here for a second, basically allows a proton to transfer from the outside to the inside, basically creating its own energy. So the creation of this energy creates heat. So brown fat creates heat, white fat just kinda of hangs out there. But anyway, those are the different kinds of sort of adipose tissue that you'll see sub-Q. But today I wanna to focus more on visceral. See, visceral fat surrounds the organs, right? Visceral fat is inside our abdomen, in between our organs, and it's there for cushion with the organs, but it also has other not so pleasant metabolic effects. You see, because the fat cells in visceral fat are larger, they end up releasing a lot more in the way of inflammatory cytokines. This is the main reason why visceral fat is bad. They release a lot of inflammation and they release that inflammation right into our liver and right into our vital organs because it's right there. But there's more to it than just that too. You see, it's so metabolically active, it basically takes on a life of its own. So it gets acted upon by a lot of different things. It has more glucocorticoid receptors, it has more adrenogenic receptors, and it just overall responds to stress. So because they're more sensitive to the stress and the glucocorticoids and things like that, that's why you will find a lot of times if people get stressed out, they'll start storing fat in their abdomen and they may not look fat, but they actually start looking more distended. So if you ever get stressed out, you might notice that you're storing more in the way of that visceral fat. That's because it's more metabolically active in that way. Now, why does this actually happen? For those of you that care, I'm gonna to touch on a study really quick that's pretty interesting. Researchers over at the University of Illinois in Chicago did a deep dive and they took a look at mice. Now mice, their type of fat is usually the same kind of fat that we would have as visceral fat. Okay, they have a lot of brown fat, they have a lot of visceral fat as their actual body fat. So even though this study was done on mice, it's very, very relevant. They found that they had a specific gene known as TRIPBR2. Okay, hear me out on this, I promise it'll make sense. We're just gonna call it TRIP, okay? This TRIP gene triggers very specific inflammatory responses to occur whenever overeating occurs. So what they would find is that if something overate, the TRIP gene would activate and cause inflammation to occur and therefore cause more damage, but also more fat cells. They found that when they eliminated the TRIP gene, that the mice could overeat and not gain fat. Okay, so it shows that the TRIP gene has a lot to do with why it becomes so dangerous. It releases so much inflammation. So what's the correlation? We have a lot of TRIP gene in our visceral fat. So correlation does not equal causation, but it sounds like it's this one gene that makes visceral fat so much more dangerous than regular adipose tissue throughout the rest of our body. So the real question is, how the heck do we get rid of this stuff 
and what's it going to take, okay? So when it comes down to it, it's really pretty easy. And these are a couple of things that I usually talk about quite often. The first one is implementing high intensity interval training just a couple times per week. There was a study that was published in the Journal of Sports Medicine and Physical Fitness that found when they looked at 39 different test subjects and broke them into two groups, one group that went ahead and did four days per week traditional weight training gym workout, and the remainder did a gym workout plus two days per week of HIT, that the HIT group saw a 2.2% fat reduction in their visceral fat. Okay, the other group did not see that. So the visceral fat was directly targeted by HIT probably because the body's under extreme stress. You're stressing the body out, which activates the adrenogenic receptors, which activates that immune response, that adrenaline response within the specific visceral fat that causes it to get activated and get burned, whereas it normally wouldn't quite as much. The other way is another one that I talk about all the time, and that's fasting, but this isn't just Thomas DeLauer being the fasting advocate here. Okay, there was a study that was published in the Nutrition Journal that found that just fasting for a period of eight weeks of like intermittent fasting, Subjects lost 1.5 pounds of pure visceral fat. Okay, that's a lot of fat when you're talking about the visceral setting. That's a lot of metabolic hormonal damage that you're reversing or at least eliminating from occurring in the first place. So pretty powerful stuff. But why does this happen? Okay, here's the why and here's why it's super important. You can explain this to all your friends and you can just drill it into your own mind. Okay, when we fast, white adipose tissue turns into visceral. Yeah, literally, it turns normal adipose sub-Q tissue into visceral tissue. If you were to stop me right there, I would sound crazy. Why would that be good? Why would we ever want regular adipose tissue to turn into just visceral tissue? Well, the fact is the visceral tissue is more metabolically active and it's gonna get burned faster in a fasting state simply because it's closer and activated with the portal vein. So basically you get energy quicker. So when you're fasting and your body's stressed out and it's in a mode of actually burning fat, the visceral fat is going to dump its fat cells first. So the adipose tissue in the rest of our body gets genetically turned into visceral fat. Then the visceral fat gets burned because we're under stress with more glucocorticoid receptors, more adrenaline receptors, things like that. And because it has a direct link to the liver to create ketones or energy from the fat. Pretty powerful stuff. So if you're suffering from like a belly that you don't really understand why it's there, try some HIT or try one or two days of fasting because it makes a huge difference. But at the end of the day, don't hate on the visceral fat. It's still an energy source for the body. We just need the proper mechanisms in place so that the body can take our adipose tissue, turn it into visceral, and then burn it and incinerate it and get rid of it for life. So as always, make sure you're locked in on my channel and I'll see you in the next video.